Welcome to Fun Rover TV, the show produced by Land Rover enthusiasts for Land Rover enthusiasts. We make this series to help you run, maintain and upgrade your own Land Rover, saving money and having fun in the process. In this episode, we'll show you the basic techniques to driving safely in snow and ice. We'll also demonstrate some common mistakes that drivers make in the snow. In order to hunt down some snowy conditions, we headed to Todnau in the Black Forest region of Germany. Driving in snowy winter icy conditions can be very treacherous so before you even set off you need to make sure your vehicle has been well maintained and prepared. That includes using things like all-terrain tyres. We've got Cooper STTs on, those are M plus S tyres which means that they are uh, all season tyres. In the country we're currently in Germany if you were to have an accident with anything but a winter or all season tyre and you had an accident well your insurance company wouldn't pay out and you'd potentially have a, a liability problem because it's such a dangerous thing so make sure you've got a good set of rubbers anything like uh, bf goodrich cooper sort of the off terrain the off-road tires works well all-terrain tires as well they're pretty good next up we have done some very simple things with the doors in really cold conditions with land rovers you can find that the door seals freeze up and so do the locks when you have them so put some light machine oil three in one oil on the seals something like that that stops them sealing uh, and freezing up then if you put a little bit of wd uh, in the lock that helps that not freeze up and you can open your car as you should be able to do make sure you don't put any kind of petroleum jelly or wd on the rubber seals because they will perish before you set off you need to remove the snow from the roof. Failing to do so could result in snow sliding off the roof across your line of sight when braking. We've cleaned off all the wing mirrors, if you want to have a look at that, Heath. It's critical for safe driving that all mirrors are clean and clear, allowing maximum visibility all around. We've also cleaned off the windscreen. And the reason that we do that, obviously, is so you can see. So that's completely clear. We've lifted off the wipers before using them. If the wipers stick to the screen and you try and activate them, then it blows the fuses. I've done that before. And the fuse is actually the one that also manages the speedometer or your dials, which blows those out, so that's dangerous. Here we have a snow cowl from Mud UK. Now these are fantastic bits of kit. You can see here, there's quite a buildup of snow on top of the wing. Now, if you didn't have the snow cowl on, that would be over your heat event. It would either melt, go into your heater, and you can hear that kind of like uh, bubbling noise that happens when that occurs, or you wouldn't be able to get very much heater output. So having a snow cowl draws the air upwards, protects the heat vent inlet, and it means that you get nice flow of air, nice hot air, which makes the cab more comfortable. Up front, well, we've got one of these radiator muffs. Now there's several companies have uh, options for these. You can look at companies like Exmoor Trim, they have some really good ones. This one's from Globe Roma. I believe they still produce them, but you probably have to email them and get each one's basically handmade. So it's a nice little bit of kit. What that does is, if I undo this, then I'll just drop that down and zip that up. The zips have actually got frozen. That blocks off cold air into your radiator and the intercooler just means that your engine gets a lot warmer quicker and it means that your heater gets a lot warmer quicker so again it's it's a comfort thing but it does stop if it is snowing quite heavily it stops a build-up on your intercooler which could cause problems with the engine coolant one last thing before we even get into the vehicle when you're walking around in snow obviously you get snow all over your boots if that gets into the treads of your shoes and then transfers to your pedals that it could make your pedals slippy. So Land Rover recommend, when you approach the vehicle, side steps, give them a little bang, that gets rid of all the snow off of your boot. You could also do it on the sill, but just bear in mind it is soft aluminium, so you could actually dint it. Okay, so snow driving then is basically all about being very careful, being slow with your controls. So to start off, we're in some nice fresh snow and you can see once we get 
going using the clutch as a progressive switch, not an on and off switch. It's fairly easy to maintain movement. Snow driving is all about keeping momentum, as much momentum as you can, but obviously not too much. If you have too much momentum, then it's dangerous. If you have too little, then your wheels will slip. If you can, try and drive in fresh, thick snow. So if you're on a road, for example, you might be able to get your wheels into fresh snow, which hasn't been churned up or frozen. That makes a big difference, as you can see here. The car's very happy to just coast along in first gear high. Try and use as high a gear as possible when you're driving in snow. You want to set off perhaps in second because it's going to give you so much less wheel slip than if you were to start in first. Try and anticipate the points where you're going to lose grip and you should engage your diff lock before you do so. Don't do it after the fact because it makes things a lot harder. Now you can go on our website, we've got a list of equipment you should carry with you and it's pretty comprehensive. It's got stuff like shovels, shackles in case you need to tow anyone out or be towed. So have a look at that, it's on the screen now. And just a couple of other things you definitely want to have is perhaps some a snow shovel and a bit of food they always recommend to have a little bit of food. So that's driving on nice fresh snow very easily. So let's think about braking now. If we brake too hard, you saw there that the vehicle slid and we lost control and now we've got ourselves stuck. So what we want to do is engage our lower box, second gear and there we go, we're out of that problem. Keep your steering inputs, brake and the throttle inputs gentle, very steady and that should mean that you're more in control. Don't do anything harsh and aggressive like that. If I want to brake now, I'm just going to lightly press the brakes and you can see we came to a really controlled stop there, no problems. So be gentle, gingerly is how a lot of people describe it, so nice and smooth, careful, don't go too fast and you shouldn't have any problems with acceleration or braking. One final thing with your steering input, you want to do smooth, slow, progressive movements. Don't be harsh with the wheel, like this, because it's just not needed. Be nice, slow, allow the wheels to grip and pull you around and keep you moving ever forward. So that's steering. Now, let's talk about losing control. If we lost control, the back end of the vehicle comes out. You should carefully steer into the skid. So with the direction of the skid, if the vehicle's going left, gently steer to the left. If the vehicle's going to the right, gently steer to the right. You may have to dip the clutch. Don't go for the brake straight away. Feel the road conditions so that you know what you're doing. You're not gonna make things worse. It's probably worth practicing that on a car park like we are on here you can get used to losing control on purpose in a safe area. Always leave a safe braking distance to the vehicle in front, expecting the unexpected and knowing that snow and ice can increase stopping distances five to 10 times. One final tip that uh, the driving instructor Gavin Earnshaw gave us when we were putting together the article to go with this post, this video. Every so often, when it's safe to do so, check the kind of grip levels you've got. Just give the steering wheel a small waggle and that should help you just understand the surface that you're currently on. You can feel the surface, how icy it is, how slippy it is. We're not steering enough to lose control, we're just steering to find out more about the conditions we're driving in. When descending a hill, we want to use the brake pedal as little as possible. We use an engine brake in here, however first gear provided too much braking power and there's a small, almost imperceptible slip. To recover from this, you can dip your clutch or accelerate slightly to match the speed of the vehicle with the road surface. Here's an example of a poor failed hill climb recovery attempt. We fit the brakes too hard and too late and too heavily because the vehicle is now sliding backwards. We're trying to dip the clutch and steer in and it's just making the whole thing uncontrolled and poor practice. To do it properly, you need to press and hold the brake pedal firmly Make sure it's clear behind you, 
engage reverse gear, we then want to release our foot off the brake, release the clutch and allow the engine braking to control your descent. Here's an example of lack of momentum, we're in first gear low and you can see here this just causes a complete loss of grip and there's no way now to get up this hill so we need to follow the proper recovery technique and next time a longer run up. Here's another example of not quite having enough momentum and it really underlines the importance of the momentum in snow driving. The wheels here are spinning, it causes the vehicle to slide and if this was on a tighter road it could be dangerous, if it was a steeper slope it could be even more dangerous. Waggling the wheel just about gives us enough grip to keep going and get to the top but it's another example showing how you need to have a reasonable amount of speed and velocity in driving, particularly with hills. So we've covered steering, acceleration, braking. We have covered the diff lock, the proper use of that, when you should engage it, when you should use low box, and how to safely control a vehicle in snow and ice. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Fun Rover TV. For more where that came from, you can check us out on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube, or on our website, funrover.com, where you'll find all manner of articles and blog posts, guides and tips, to do with Land Rovers.